Hey guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is March the 16th. It is Saturday evening. Yeah, it's a Saturday evening. Uh, I've had a nice cold beer. It's a warm day in Florida. And uh, anyway, I figured I have a little bit of time. Why don't I do this for you? Because you did this for me. So um, how about we do this? So um, a few days ago, I made a video on uh, Equinor, which is the Norwegian energy company. And I sort of posed the question. And I said, is uh, Equinor or could Equinor possibly be the next Petrobras for us? The answer is absolutely a resounding no. The more I read about Equinor, the less impressed I am with the company, uh, especially now that they've cut their 14% dividend down to something that's arguably more reasonable. It's no longer attractive for a whole variety of uh, reasons, including their quest for renewable energy and carbon capture, which is just a whole lot of garbage. Anyway, what I want to do is I actually want to do a viewer's choice video. So uh, the comments related to that particular video and perhaps uh, one or a couple of them that went before, highlighted a few of the equities that you guys have been following and that I arguably do not pay any attention to at all. So uh, in order to show you that I do pay attention to the comments that you make in the channel, uh, I thought, why don't I round up some of these and talk about some of your choices as opposed to some of mine. These include Atlas Energy Solutions, TransOcean, which we've spoken about many times before, Global X Uranium, which is an ETF, Woodside, which is an Australian energy company, and Western Uranium and Vanadium. So where did these five equities come from? Well, let me show you. The Kong stocks uh, basically uh, sent a message. <laughs> the message simply says dollar WDS, w, uh, hashtag WDS, the Kong stocks. So um, obviously, uh, he must be a fan of Woodside. Thrifty Nifty Fund said, have you looked and thought about RIG? Now, to be honest, Thrifty Nifty Fund, I have looked at RIG many, many times before, and I thought about it too, and I've covered it a couple of times as well, but it's been many, many months. So I thought, hey, you know what? Thrifty Nifty Fund says RIG could be some fun, so let's take a look at that one too. The Joker Speak said, I played with Atlas Energy with patience, Good job, the Joker speaks, and bought the bulk of my shares after it dropped back to $15.80. Sweet deal. What a great trade. Congratulations. Several weeks later, it's pushing 21 bucks, 2.5% of my portfolio at the time of purchase. Well done, the Joker speaks. Crypto V said, hey, glad to see you back. <laughs> yeah, I've been away for a while, huh? But here I am. Not sure if you looked at another Canadian uranium play. Western Uranium WUC is the ticker in Canada. And then John Woodman, John Woodman 595 said, I hope I can call, start calling you Mr. Uranium soon. Well, uh, as you've noticed, I don't really call myself Mr. Oxy anymore. So maybe uh, in the quest for a new name, I should become Mr. Uranium. After all, I have some positions in uranium companies and we'll talk about them as we go along. He says, I'm starting a position on the ETF and ETF is an exchange traded fund. The ticker symbol is URA. So let's see how these uh, stocks basically uh, compare one with the other, and then we'll see if we can pick a winner or two from the bunch. So i got five of them, right? So the question here is buy, hold, sell. Uh, these are your choices, not mine. So firstly, let's take a look here. NYSE ARCA, this is the ETF. It's an exchange traded fund, so a little different from the other four to start with. And then we have three of them trading on the New York Stock Exchange, and one is trading on the Canadian Exchange. Uh, but you can also buy OTC, which means over the counter in the United States. Uh, the ticker symbol in Canada is WUC.CN. Now, um, other than for the fact that they're not the same, right? So not applicable is the ETF because it's an exchange traded fund. And then we have a couple of US oil integrated, international integrated oil and gas drilling. Obviously, that one's rigged. And then uh, not applicable. I'm not sure why uranium companies or uranium uh, ETF is not applicable because uh, arguably they're commodities, but they're also energy and stuff like that. So anyway, at the bottom of every screen, I've put a little um, table here so you can follow along and see which of the stocks I'm referring to as I go through this presentation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a snapshot that I took at the end of day. So at close yesterday, which was March the 15th, Friday, March the 15th. I took a snapshot of each of five of these five, and I'll tell you sort of where, where the uh, highlights and lowlights are based on my little quick snapshot view, right? So the first thing I want to look at here 
Um, by the way, I'm using bar charts, which you can use as well, barcharts.com. It allows you to compare five stocks. The first thing I want to look at here is the 20-day raw stochastic. Now, without going too deep into the technical weeds, if the 20-day uh, raw stochastic has a number greater than 80%, then arguably it is overbought. So too many people have jumped in and you've probably hit the uh, sort of uh, high in terms of where the stock price might be going in theory, because lots and lots of people have been buying and nobody has really been selling. So the 20-day raw stochastic has gone higher and higher and higher. And in the case of these two, so Atlas Energy and Vance Ocean, it is now comfortably above 80%. So they are overbought. Conversely, if it's 20 or below, it's oversold. Now we don't have a 20 or below here, but you can see Woodside uh, has been selling off probably more than the others. And the ETF, ironically, is at 41% on the 20-day raw stochastic. So uh, a lot of people have probably taken some profit on uranium because uranium has just been flying, right? On a price earnings basis here, you can see that uh, if you want to use this as a benchmark, we have a couple of uh, zeros here and one not applicable. Uh, but if you look at Atlas Energy, the uh, price earnings ratio at 13 is not, not too bad. It's actually sort of below the average of the S&P 500. So uh, it's a reasonable entry price. And I see, you know, 50% of the analysts are still basically saying buy. Interestingly enough, 100% of the analysts covering Woodside, and I'm not sure how many analysts are covering Woodside, um, are, are saying sell, 100% sell, right? So if 100% of the analysts say sell, then I want to perhaps take a deeper dive into Woodside Energy and see if it could potentially be a buying opportunity for me because I'm a contrarian. Half the analysts are saying sell on uh, rig, that's Vance Ocean. So you got like a 50-50 split there as well as with Atlas Energy. It's interesting stuff, right? How have they performed? Well, if you've been in Atlas Energy, like the Joker speaks, then you've uh, had a very nice ride over the past, you know, one or three months or so. Prior to that, you weren't doing that great. But now you're doing really, really well. Uh, on the other hand, if you were in the um, Western Uranium and Vanadium Corporation stock, you uh, are probably smiling. You're doing okay. I mean, for a six months, a year to date, you um, are running at around 17%. That's not too bad. Transocean's down 30% over six months. Woodside's down 20%. Atlas Energy, Energy is down just a smidge, right? It also pays a dividend, so you can almost call that a wash. And then the uranium ETF is only up a little bit, but uranium is sort of at the beginning cycle of a uh, bull run. And we've seen the price of uranium over the last year or so double. So if you were long on uranium stocks, you have probably done okay, excluding perhaps to a lesser degree on the ETF itself. The key statistics are interesting because what I can do here is I can compare the market capitalization or market valuation. So market cap, in case you don't remember, is the total number of outstanding shares multiplied by the current share price. But what I can do here is I can look at the market cap of the company, 2.7 billion. It's not applicable here on the first uh, column because it's an ETF, right? So it's not an equity, it's an exchange traded fund that's made up on a, of a variety of different equities. We'll take a look at the top 10 for GX Uranium, the ETF in just a minute. Uh, and then what I can do is I can compare, right? So I have a company here like Atlas where I can say this company generates, you can see the numbers here, right? So I have a company where I have an annual sales number of 613, almost $614 million with a market cap of 2.2. It's not a huge delta between the two, but look at this one, right? So on Woodside uh, Energy, we have a annual sales number of almost $14 billion with a market cap of only just shy of 19 billion, right? So that's quite narrow for a company this large. It's uh, generating a huge amount of revenue in terms of sales, but its market cap is relatively low, right? And remember, I just showed you 100% of the analysts say sell. So um, this is a company where you might want to uh, spend a little bit of time if you're interested and see if this is somewhere where you can park a little bit of your money. Transocean, 2.8 billion dollars in sales and a uh, market cap of only 4.5, right? So uh, once again, uh, quite narrow that spread there. Uh, this little company here, this uh, penny stock, the um, the definition of a penny stock is basically anything that trades below five dollars, and uh, even Transocean Rig is currently at around five bucks, so it's very close to being a penny stock itself. Um, sometimes, what uh, companies do uh, in order to 
give themselves a little bit more standing in the market is they'll do a reverse split. Um, about probably about 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago or so, uh, Citibank, after the uh, financial crisis of 2008, 2010, Citibank stock was trading at about five bucks. Uh, but of course, Citibank's a little bit larger in terms of market cap than uh, TransOcean. But what Citibank did was they did a reverse split and uh, they gave you one share for every 10 you had. It didn't change the value of your portfolio because effectively they just split the shares. It's a reverse split, um, taking effectively uh, the share total lower and pushing the stock price higher. So Citibank was also trading at around five bucks or so like TransOcean. They did a reverse split and then of course, suddenly the stock price is 50 bucks, but now you own one share instead of 10, right? So uh, sometimes companies do this to uh, make themselves look a little bit better. We have uh, four of these paying dividends, so uh, we'll take a closer look at that in just a minute, and one of them is not applicable because Western uranium and vanadium doesn't pay a dividend. If you look at it in picture form on a graph, and here I'm looking over a one-year period, you would have been very, very happy with Western uranium because you've doubled your money, uh, basically up about 93, 94%. You probably would have been okay uh, on the ETF as well, so this is GX uranium ETF. Uh, the blue one over here is Atlas, which is done pretty good too. The other two are kind of the bottom feeders here. And uh, if you were long on those, you probably are kind of less happy than what you would be with the others. So let's take a look at these sort of uh, on an individual basis, just taking a quick snapshot of each one of them. And as I said at the beginning, I took this at close of market, March the 15th, right? So today is Saturday. So effectively, this is how they ended the week last week. You can buy this ETF. So on the New York Stock Exchange, you can buy URA, the Global X Uranium ETF, for 28 bucks approximately. It has an expense ratio of 0.7, which is, uh, some people will say that's okay. Other people will say that's quite high. For me, it's quite high. If you look at some of the ETFs that I've shared with you before, like XLE, uh, the energy ETF, um, its gross expense ratio is only like 0.1, right? So, uh, 0.7 or thereabouts is for me is, is a little bit rich, but it's uranium. And as I said, uranium looks to be sort of at the uh, start of a bull run. Um, that's the way it looks anyway, as the uh, world aspires to uh, clean energy. And uranium is pretty much the cleanest, safest, greenest energy you can imagine. Distribution yield, so it pays a dividend as well. Not, not too bad. It pays like buck 68 currently. Um, 52 week range just sitting to the right of center. So uh, not a bad entry point perhaps from that point of view. Down here at the bottom, uh, towards the middle of the page, you can see the Morningstar rating on this. Uh, in the Morningstar star style box, they say the risk is high and the return is above average. And over on the far right, you can see the top 10 holdings of the companies, uh, of, of the ETF, I'm, I'm sorry. So the exchange traded funds top 10 holdings include 21% Cameco. Cameco is my longest, uh, sorry, <laughs> my largest long uranium position. So Cameco is a company that I purchased and um, opened a position when it was trading at around 20 bucks. And that's done really, really well for me because it's more than doubled my money to date. Uh, another one that I'm quite familiar with is Paladin Energy. It's up 18% year to date, right? So this is as of March the 15th, 2024, as I said yesterday, it's up 18% year to date. So Paladin is a small cap stock. They own uranium mines in Namibia, which is in South, South Africa, Southern Africa, just north of South Africa uh, on the West Coast. And uh, what um, Paladin has done is they pretty much have no debt. They've been stockpiling their uranium and uh, their Heinrich mines have basically started producing now again. So uh, Paladin is, uh, is, is actually a very attractive uranium miner. Uh, many of these companies, depending on where and when you get in, the, uh, the mining companies as a general rule are either exploring or they're developing or they are producing, right? So in the case of Paladin, they've now started production again. So that one should be interesting too. Kazatom problem is uh, the worst performer in the top 10 year. Lucky for me, uh, because you can't always plan these things and you can't predict how it's gonna work. But fortunately for me, um, my largest uranium holding by far is Cameco. 
And uh, that one, as I said, has basically doubled in uh, value since I first opened the position. Atlas Energy, so this was a sweet deal for somebody, right? <laughs> I mentioned this at the start, right? If your uh, entry was $15.80 and now it's trading at about 20 bucks, which was the closing price yesterday, you can see it sitting just right off center on the 52 week range, which was between 15 and 24. So if you timed it well, you got in at 15, congratulations, sweet deal. It's not too small, right? It's a small cap growth company, but it's got a market cap of $1.3 billion. Uh, earnings per share positive, PE ratio of only 14, which is reasonable. Uh, arguably, it should have been um, a company that you got into when it was trading at 15 bucks when the PE might have been a bit lower. It pays a dividend as well, which is quite nice. So uh, it gives you a little bit of a hedge in, in case the uh, stock price tumbles. On the far right here, you can see that it overperformed the indices phenomenally and then crashed and tanked into January. And now it's back on the up again and pretty much performing in line with the NASDAQ sort of over the past one year period. But be cautious, right at the bottom in the middle here, you can see it's 32% held by institutions, but the short interest is almost 9%, right? So for every 10 people, that uh, have a position in Atlas Energy, at least one of them is short, expecting it to go down from where it is currently. And it's had a nice run. So you know how the stock market makes these peaks and valleys, right? So uh, right now it's sort of edging up towards a the peak there. It might pull back a little bit. So, uh, hey, I, I don't have a position, but you could always take a little bit of profit. No one gets poor taking profit, right? Woodside Energy. So this uh, Woodside is a company that's Australian based. This is a large cap value stock in Australia. It's a $37 billion market cap. You can buy it for less than 20 bucks. I think it's super cheap, right? Uh, if you look at its 50, 52 week range, way to the left, right? The um, 52 week range, $19.03 to $25, almost $26 and it's sitting way to the left. So uh, a nice time to get in on that one too. Um, here we have a, a company that pays a decent dividend as well. It's got an annual yield of $1.40. And the $1.40 has expressed as a percentage of the current stock price, which is 1948, is yielding 7%. And then um, you can see it's been a hopeless, uh, horrible underperformer for people who are long in Woodside. But uh, you know, this is one of those situations where if all the analysts are saying sell, it's underperforming, everything is terrible, everything is bad. Um, you can do a little bit of due diligence and see if now might be a good time to get in or not. Uh, you can always sort of follow the Warren Buffett philosophy, which is sort of buy when everyone else is selling and sell when everybody else is buying. What's going on with rig? So TransOcean, here's that $5 stock I was talking about earlier, right? If they do a reverse split and they give you a 10 for one, sorry, the other way around, a one for 10, stock would suddenly be trading at $58. Uh, but then maybe less people would be likely or inclined to buy it. So maybe they don't want to do that. So uh, that's one of the reasons why they won't allow me to sit on the board at TransOcean because I'd be saying, okay, maybe you can do a reverse split for like uh, one for five or something, you know, <laughs> have a $25 stock price. Anyway, it's sitting left of center on its 52 week range, which is quite narrow, 445 to 888, right? So it's not like a huge delta there between the 52 week high and low. So this one is really, been struggling to get going, right? A $5 billion market cap makes it a small cap value stock. But look at the short interest down here at the bottom in the middle on this one, nearly 20%. So uh, unlike the example I just gave you about 10 people and one of them is short, on this one, if you know five people who have a position in TransOcean, one of your five friends is selling it short, expecting it to go down even more from where it is currently trading at five bucks and 80 cents, right? Terrible performer in terms of the indices. Uh, when I see pictures like this, you know, you always get that feeling or, or that thought perhaps, or I do anyway. You say, you know, if my uh, single stock that I picked is performing so badly, I might just as well buy myself a, uh, a market index, you know, like DIA, which tracks the uh, Dow Jones Industrial, which is this light blue line over here. Well, otherwise I can buy something like VYM, which is, uh, sort of a high dividend yielding index of dividend paying stocks. It's more sort of in line with the S&P 500, the uh, purple or lilac line sort of running down the middle here, you know? So sometimes we get it wrong, sometimes we get it right. And uh, obviously when uh, rig spiked 
in July last year, we probably thought we were getting it right. And now we're wondering, like, did we make a mistake? Yes or no, if we are still wrong. How about this little guy, Western Uranium? So Western Uranium and Vanadium Corporation. I don't know anything about Vanadium. So um, in fact, I don't know what it's used for. So it's uh, one of those probably rare earth type uh, metals that I'm just not too familiar with. So uh, I would need to do a little bit of homework there. Anyway, small cap growth company you can buy for buck 38, which means you can get a lot of shares for a little bit of money. Uh, market cap is only 73.7 million. So $74 million. And I say only because you know what? You have to respect people who have the ability to build a $74 million company. Uh, very few people, including the people watching this uh, video, have done that before. I've had the good fortune of being able to participate in one of those builds in a very small and humble way. And uh, we managed to exit and sell our company to Morgan Stanley. Uh, but my contribution was minuscule, uh, minis right? The, um, the uh, people around me and the team that surrounded me did all the hard and heavy lifting, hard work and heavy lifting. This one sitting here is just right of center in its 52 week range. Um, so now might be a good entry point, right? It's got negative earnings uh, per share. So uh, you can't really use that as a, as a guide, uh, but it's been performing quite well, but don't be fooled by the fact that it is performing quite well, because even though you might be up 100% based on your entry position, uh, it's also maybe more related to the fact that the price of uranium spiked as opposed to um, the fact that Western Uranium and Vanadium Corporation is doing a good job from a management point of view. So I don't know that. So these are some of the things we want to do when we do our homework and decide whether to buy a stock or not. So those were some of your picks. Um, of the five, uh, I can put an easy check mark next to the Global X Uranium ETF and Western Uranium and Vanadium. And even though, as I said, I don't know anything about Vanadium, uh, the fact that it includes the word uranium uh, makes me feel like it's potentially in a bit of a bullish cycle. What I want to do with you uh, just very, very briefly before I wrap it up is I just want to tell you how I play these small cap stocks like Western Uranium, for example, where you can buy the stock for like a buck 38, or Paladin, where you can buy the stock for less than a dollar, right? So um, there's, there's a good chance uh, if you um, play your cards well and you do your homework and your due diligence and make sure that you um, buy into something that actually has legs uh, over time, right? Depending on what your time period is, it might be you know three years or so, uh, unless you're hoping to day trade and get lucky. Um, but what you wanna do effectively or what I've done before, I've covered some of this by the way, in, in the library you'll find uh, videos that uh, relate to, for instance, Paladin as an example. Um, what I try to do is if I buy into a stock, so let's say, for instance, Paladin, I bought into Paladin when it was trading at about 20 cents. And then when the stock moved to over 40 cents per share, right, which means I doubled my money, I cash out all my initial investment. So, you know, like, doesn't matter what the number is. Uh, let's say I put in $10,000 and then the $10,000 uh, has a nice spike. And now my uh, unrealized gain on the stock is $20,000. And what I do is I, I sell half of it. So I take back my $10,000 that I invested. And now I'm using the house's money, right? So this is a free position for me on Paladin. I have $10,000 worth of Paladin stock using my example. I've taken my own $10,000 off the table, put it back in the bank because now I can buy something else. And of course I can do it again. And now I can let it run. And very often I let it run. Sometimes it pulls back and my $10,000 of house money, which is free money, uh, becomes $5,000 and sometimes it doubles again and becomes $20,000 again, in which case, obviously, I'm very, very happy. Now, the other thing that you can do when you uh, deploy this type of a strategy is that when you have this type of a doubling in your equity position, it also creates a bit of a hedge for you against market losses that you might suffer on the other side of the ledger. So, for example, uh, last year, I took a hit and actually exited ICANN, so IEP, which I punted for a long time as one of my favorite stocks because of its high dividend. Well, the high dividend is no longer that high um, because it used to be $2 a quarter and now it's $1 a quarter, so they cut it in half. And in addition to that, the stock tumbled from um, around $70 down to about 20 bucks. I'm not sure where it's trading right now, but it's about $20. Anyway, when I sold out of uh, ICANN, 
my cost basis was around $45 a share or a unit because it's a, a limited partnership. And um, I exited it around 38 on paper. So I'm taking a $7 per unit loss and I had thousands of shares. So uh, then what I do is I use some of that free house money to offset some of my losses on ICANN because from time to time we are gonna take a loss. And uh, Warren Buffett also famously once said, there are only two rules to stock investing and or stock market investing. The first rule is don't lose any money. And the second rule is don't forget rule number one. So that's nice, but sometimes you will lose money. And when you have outsized gains, you sometimes have an opportunity to offset some of those losses. So it doesn't hurt you that much when you have to exit a position, take a loss. So on that note, guys, I hope it's helpful. I hope it's interesting. And thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.